St. John's Community Baptist Church family and all of those who are joining us online. Good morning. My name is Pastor Phil Gilmore and this is my lovely wife Crystal and we are the St. John's Community Baptist Church where our, our doors, doors swing open, open on the hinges, hinges of love and we're so thankful and grateful that you decided it was not robbery to join us in this worship experience this morning. Let me just remind you before I pray that at the end of the message, this is the first Sunday, we will be partaking of Holy Communion. So come on, let's enter into the presence of the Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you, dear God, for the gift of life. We thank you, God, for just another Lord's day, yes. another opportunity, oh God, to give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all the praise that is due your name. We pray, Father God, that this worship experience will be meaningful to us. Lord, that you will feed our souls, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, and that we will connect with you on a deeper level. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You do all things well. In Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning to you again. As you know, President Trump and the First Lady and at least eight or nine others have contracted the coronavirus attending an outdoor event without adhering to the CDC guidelines for wearing masks or practicing social distancing. In empathy, we will pray for their complete recovery. Please note that everyone who attended that event, that outdoor event, tested negative right before the event. They did not feel sick Therefore, all assume they were safe and no one took the prescribed precautions. Today, between the hours of 2 and 4 p.m., there will be a food distribution and a book bag giveaway event at the church in the church parking lot. We thank everyone who participated so far by giving monetary gifts or food donations. Additional food donations will be accepted beginning this afternoon at 12.15 p.m. The event organizers are asking that everyone who plans to participate please wear masks and follow social distancing protocols. It states in Proverbs 4.6, Do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The truth is, that no one can guarantee a completely virus-free environment. The best we can do is to operate in wisdom offered by the CDC and pray for protection. It is our desire to be a blessing to the community and to stay safe. So let's all do our part and achieve both goals. We do not walk in fear. We will walk in wisdom covered by the blood of Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come together praying this morning. Father, first we want to lift up to you our praises because you are worthy. 
We praise you, Lord, because you are holy. We praise you, Lord, because you are righteous and just God. Lord, we thank you for your love, your provisions, and your protection. Lord, your word in, in Philippians 4, 6 tells us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present our requests to you, God. So this morning, we lift before you the President and First Lady of the United States of America. We pray, Lord, for their overall health and wellness. We also pray for all those who have been and are still being affected in any way as a result from the COVID-19 pandemic. God, we need your wisdom, your comfort, and your strength. We are especially praying for those who have lost loved ones, jobs, homes, those who are struggling with addictions, depression, and isolation. Holy Spirit, as families are adjusting to everyone being home, businesses being closed, businesses and actually schools being closed, Lord, we ask you to guide your people in their new realities. Give spouses grace for each other, prompt warm uh, outspoken words for parents who are actually worn out to speak words of kindness and encouragement to their children. Father, help the children be creative and experience ways to embrace their learning. Lord, sharpen their hearts, their minds. Stimulate them, Lord, to stay connected and actively engaged. We pray for the safety and protection of those who will be participating in the event this afternoon in the church parking lot as all heed to the CDC guidelines by wearing masks and social distancing. Lord, I pray that we can be a blessing to those that are in need because you, Lord, have been a blessing to us. And because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail, and his mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, my God. 
worship. I say it every week. It's always a blessing when you usher in the presence of the Lord. It's always uplifting to my spirit and my soul. Now, this is the part of service where everyone can participate by giving of your tithes and your offerings. It's offering time, saints. There are several ways in which you can give. You can give by texting SJCBC to 73256. You will receive a text message in return with the given link. If you are a member of the Round community, you can give through the Round Connect application on your tablet, your phone, or your PC. Either text giving or application giving allows you to choose a one-time gift or schedule reoccurring gifts. You may also give through your bank via bill pay or mail a check to St. John's Community Baptist Church, P.O. Box 2448, Newark, New Jersey, 07114. Remember, church, God loves a generous giver. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for your presence today. We thank you, Lord, that you touched us with the finger of love and breathed life into us, God. Lord, we ask that you would govern us throughout this day. Be with us, strengthen us, protect us, and guide us. Give us your wisdom. Comfort those who need comforting. Lord, we ask that you use these gifts for your kingdom and to glorify your name. We pray that no one go lacking for what they have given. We love you and we thank you and we praise you. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we will hear from praise and worship, and then the next voice will be from our very own Pastor Phil Gilmore. God bless you. We're going to ask the Lord to rest upon our hearts. Would you like your spirit rest upon our hearts, Lord? Yes, Lord. Come on, like the do in the morning. Rest upon our hearts, God. Like the dew in the morning Ooh, 
God is such a wonderful God to us. He is so faithful. He's so kind. He's so generous. Yeah. We thank our praise and worship team for doing what they do uh, every week. And we so appreciate their service uh, to us uh, as a church family. Uh, we thank my wife for her wonderful uh, words of instruction and encouragement uh, on today. Uh, and um, you know we're going back to Psalms 23. He guides me in the paths, in the right paths, is our message. He leads me in the right path. Psalms uh, 23, verse 3. In the second part of that verse. Um, so come on, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you, dear God, for just um, being connected to you in such a real and a personal way. Yes, Lord. Lord, we cannot get along without you. Thank you, Lord, for being our shepherd, for being our good shepherd, for caring so much for us uh, in doing all that you do. Um, left to our own, oh God. I don't know where we would be. So, Lord, as we delve into this message, we pray for clarity of thought and clarity of speech, O oh God. We pray for a fresh anointing, O oh God, from you. We pray, God, that you're preparing the hearts and the minds of the people to receive your word on this morning. We need a word from you, Lord. And we thank you that there is a word from the Lord. Bless you, magnify you, and glorify you. In all of our ways, in Jesus' name we do pray, amen. 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 So we are on a quest uh, to memorize um, Psalms uh, 23. Uh, last week I told you I would give you an opportunity to test yourself. Uh, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it will be on the screen again, but we will go by the honor system. <laughs> so what I want you to do is to close your eyes and see how much of Psalms 23 you can recite. Are you ready? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. I hope you did well. Amen. We're going to try it again uh, on next week. But today we're going to focus on he leads me in the right paths or he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. Philip Keller in a shepherd's look at Psalms 23 writes this. Sheep are notorious creatures of habit. If left to themselves, they will follow the same trails until they become ruts, graze the same hills until they turn to desert waste, pollute their own ground until it is corrupt with disease and parasites. Many of the world's finest sheep ranges have been ruined beyond repair by overgrazing, poor management, and indifferent or ignorant sheep owners. A commonly held but serious misconception about sheep is that they can just get along anywhere. The truth is quite the reverse. No other class of livestock requires more careful handling, more detailed direction than do sheep. The same can be said for people. People like sheep are creatures of habit. 
We rival the sheep's need for careful handling and detailed direction. That's why we find ourselves in ruts, unable to break free from destructive habits, uh, walking the same destructive paths traveled by other people, doomed to commit the same destructive mistakes. And we do this deliberately, repeatedly, even to our own disadvantage. We think we see life clearly, but like sheep, we're nearsighted, yes. lacking 2020 life vision. Keller goes on to say this, the stubborn, self-willed, proud, self-sufficient sheep that persists in pursuing its old paths and grazing on its old polluted ground will end up a bag of bones on ruined land. The world we live in is full of such folk. Broken homes, broken hearts, derelict lives, and twisted personalities remind us everywhere of men and women who have gone their own way. We have a sick society struggling to survive on beleaguered land. The greed and selfishness of mankind leave behind a legacy of ruin and remorse. What is it about the human nature that is so determinative in self-destruction? What is it about people that we would rather survive on beleaguered, ruined land rather than graze on green pastures and drink from still waters offered by our good shepherd? Isaiah 53, 6 states this, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. Turning to my own way simply means doing what I want, asserting my own wishes, and carrying out my own ideas. Here's the problem with that style of living. People, like sheep, have a genius for going the wrong way. Yep. I'm going to say that again. People, like sheep, have a genius yep. for going the wrong way. Proverbs 16, 25 states, There is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. There is a way that seems right to a man, mm -hmm. but in the end leads to death. Here's the big idea for today. No person, hear me well, no person is clever enough to guide him or herself through the devious ways of life. He or she needs God as a guide. He or she needs God to lead them in the paths of righteousness. The Hebrew word translated paths is packed with great truths and imagery. It comes from a root word which means to orbit, to revolve, to encircle, or to surround with a protective barrier. Let me unpack that for us. Please note first that our shepherd Lord leads us in the paths, plural, yeah. of righteousness. It's not path, but paths, plural, of righteousness. Life is Dynamic. Life is comprised of a series of crisis moments and decisions that require the repetitive choosing of the right paths. Like the orbit of the earth around the sun brings the changing of seasons throughout the year, we face the changing seasons of our lives as we progress through these changing seasons, we are presented with different paths to take. Paths of righteousness and paths of unrighteousness. The paths of righteousness or the paths of unrighteousness that I must choose at the age of 20 are different from the ones that I must choose at the age of 50. 
the paths of righteousness and the paths of unrighteousness that I face as a single man could be intensely different than what I face as a married man. Yeah. The path of righteousness I, I choose today does not guarantee I will follow the path of righteousness tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Especially considering that the path of unrighteousness may deceptively appear to be the paths of righteousness. Hmm. Hmm. Detective Richie Roberts in the movie American Gangster chose the right path to not take a bribe or steal confiscated drug money. At the same time, he chose the unrighteous path to place his career before his family. We can be on the right path in one aspect of our lives, but be on the wrong path in another. Mm. This is why we need the good shepherd to lead us, because life is a series of crisis moments and decisions that require the repetitive choosing of the right paths. Secondly, the word paths also means to surround with a protective barrier. The righteous path taken at any given crisis moment is like a defensive barrier to those who are godly. Choosing the righteous path will keep you out of trouble with sin. I'm going to say it again. Choosing the righteous path will keep you out of trouble with sin. Godly living is a fortress to the godly man or godly woman. Psalms 5 and 12 states this. For surely, O Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. I love that. For surely, O oh Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Listen, the righteous path is rarely the easy path, but it is always laced with the favor of the Lord. And given the choice between the easy path and the favorite path, I would rather choose the favorite path. How about you? Amen. Let me tell you five benefits that those who walk in the righteous paths enjoy. Five benefits that those who walk in the righteous paths enjoy. First is this. The righteous enjoys the support of the Lord. The righteous enjoys the support of the Lord. Psalms 37, 17 states, better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. So many people think having more money is the answer to all their problems. They think having money insulates you from the trials, the tribulations, and the stresses of life. But nothing could be further from the truth. Money is an unreliable foundation. The stock market is a poor indicator of the true economic health of the country. It is the Lord who upholds yes. and sustains during the challenges of life. I don't care how much money you have in your bank account. Hear me. Your portfolio will not give you peace of mind if the report for the doctor comes back and says kidney failure. Wow, wow. Money can't heal you. Only Jesus can. Money can't save you, only Jesus can. Amen. But you can hold on to God's unchanging hand yes. 
especially because money can't hold you. Secondly, the righteous enjoy stability from the Lord. I'm going to say it again. The righteous enjoys stability from the Lord. Psalms 55, 22 states, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. God provides stability for the righteous when we are faced with internal tur turmoil that threatens to knock us flat. It carries with it the idea of suddenness and unexpected bad news. Anybody been blindsided before by unexpected bad news? The Lord has a way of delivering us in the nick of time. The Lord has a way of flooding our souls with sudden peace in the midst of the sudden bad news. And the scripture declares, the Lord will not allow us to fall, or as one Bible version states, he will not allow us to be moved or shaken or be overthrown. The Lord will give us the peace that surpasses all understanding and that peace will guard our hearts and minds yes. in Christ Jesus. The righteous enjoy stability from the Lord. Thirdly, the righteous enjoys the sight and supplications of the Lord. 1 Peter 3.12 states this. I love this. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Listen, the Lord is quick to see, hear, and respond to those who choose the righteous paths because their hearts are committed to his ways. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, yes. The best way to assure answers to your prayers, get this now, the best way to assure answers to your prayers is to align your heart with the heart of God. All right. Align your heart with what God wants. Align your ways with his ways. And how do you align your heart with God's heart, Pastor Gilmore? Well, I'm glad you asked. Take his word, take his precepts, take his principles, take his instructions, and take them as your own. All right. Take them all to heart and place them in your heart. Mm. Please note, the Lord is for those who choose the right paths. But the scripture says he's against those who are bent on doing evil. Yes. Listen, never be jealous or envious Come on now. against those who do evil. Come on now. Never be jealous or envious against those who do evil. Never be jealous of the apparent success mm -hmm. of the evildoer. Amen. Their prosperity. Don't you get jealous of that. Because the Lord is for you and he is against them. The drug dealer's success will be short-lived. Yes. The cheating business owner's books will be exposed. Yep. The cheating spouse will be found out. Yes. Whatever is done in the dark, God promises will be exposed yes. to the light. Yes. Never be jealous of the apparent success of the evil. Yes. Yes. Because the Lord is against them. And I would rather him be for me than against me. Amen. Amen. Here's the fourth one. The righteous enjoys success from the Lord. The righteous enjoys success from the Lord. Psalms 92 12 states this. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar from Lebanon. The righteous will flourish. Yeah. Like a palm tree, they will grow 
like a cedar from Lebanon. Godly living leads to godly provision and success in walking in the right paths. All right, God promises us faithfulness, fruitfulness, flourishing, <laughs> and increase. Yes. God grants success for his name's sake. Please don't miss the awesome truth of that. Mm. God is committed to his glory. Amen. He's committed to it. And he has tied his glory to our success. Amen. Because our success speaks to the nations that the God that we serve is the only true and living God of the universe. God. Th that's why God chose Abraham out of all the peoples on the earth who were at that time worshiping pagan gods. Mm -hmm. He chose Abraham. He said to Abraham, I'm going to so bless you so that your people will be my people and I will bless you in such a way that it will drive the other nations to jealousy mm -hmm. because they will have to look at your blessings, look at your success and say to themselves, they will have to conclude that, wow, his God must be God. Yes, yes. God treats us the same way. He wants us to be successful because he is jealous over his own glory. Lastly, the righteous enjoys the salvation or deliverance from trouble by the Lord. The righteous enjoys the salvation or deliverance from trouble by the Lord. Psalms 34, 19 states this. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. Yes. Did you hear that? A righteous man may have many troubles, but don't fret, <laughs> because the Lord delivers him from them oh, all. Yes. Listen, God's way is never the easy way. The paths of righteousness are never the popular paths. All right. The wicked hate the righteous and hate the paths of the righteous and will stir up trouble for us out of envy, jealousy, and just feeling flat out convicted. But make no mistake about it. God is a deliverer. Hallelujah. Godliness Hallelujah. keeps you out of trouble and God will deliver you from whatever trouble comes your way. Hallelujah. Listen, the passage states that God delivers the righteous from all trouble. Yeah. Not just some trouble, but all trouble. Yeah. Listen, listen, this past week, um, I saw a young lady that I grew up with. Um, and um, I saw her uh, at the uh, conclusion of uh, the funeral, uh, the homegoing services for Yvonne Lewis. Uh, amen. Keep, continue to pray for Mother Lewis and the entire family. Yes. Um, and, and I saw this young lady, and and she, she came up to me, and she said to me, she said to me, uh, "Do you recognize me?" She said, "Do you recognize me?" To, to which I responded to her, uh, "Maybe I would um, if you didn't have on the mask." But but the truth is, is that I still wouldn't have recognized her even if she didn't have on the mask. Well, why is that? Because the last time I saw her, which was probably about four or five years ago, uh, she was on Bergen Street, rail thin and drug addicted. Today, she's healthy. Hallelujah. She boasts healthy weight, <laughs> a healthy life, and a healthy lifestyle. Hallelujah. She found Jesus and Jesus did what he promises to do. Yes, sir. Jesus led her in the path of righteousness yes. Yes. and he led her out of trouble. Hallelujah. She said to me, I couldn't have done this on my own. I went to a Christian rehab place and in that place, uh, Jesus got a hold of me Hallelujah. and Jesus changed my life. She introduced me to her husband who she had met in rehab. 
he gave me the same testimony. He said, Jesus changed my life too. Once I admitted to him that I was tired yeah. of what I was doing, tired of traveling down that road, Jesus put me right on the right path. And here I am today. He told me, check this out. He told me that he and his wife got baptized on the same day in the same pool of water. Come on, somebody, and give God some praise. Come on, somebody, and tell God, thank you that you're still in the saving business. Thank you that you're still in the changing business. Thank you, Lord, that you're still in the business of taking us and putting us on the right path. What a blessing it is to have someone point the way for us when we are lost or uncertain of where we are located or where to go. Yeah. What a blessing it is to have someone give us direction mm -hmm. as to how to solve a problem. Yes, what a Lord. blessing it is to have someone trustworthy to go to in times of trouble, in times yes. of indecision, in times of crisis, in times of choice. What a blessing it is to have someone who is willing and able to provide direction and leadership when you don't have a clue as to what to do. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, stands ready to lead and to guide us into the path of righteousness yes. and the path of right living. Aren't you glad Jesus cares enough about the direction that you are going? Aren't you glad that Jesus cares enough that if you're going in the wrong way, he'll steer you around to the right way. Yes, Aren't you glad that Jesus cares enough that he refuses to give up on you? Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know that the only reason why Jesus hasn't come back, the only reason why he hasn't come back, yeah. is that he is patiently waiting he for people to come into a saving knowledge of who he is. He's waiting for people to repent. Thank you. He's waiting Thank for you, people Lord. to surrender. Because the Bible says mm -hmm. that God desires that none should perish. Thank you, Lord. Aren't you glad, so glad. that the path so of righteousness will lead us into eternal life? So glad. So glad. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Yes. Jesus is the path that we should travel. He's the path that will lead us to eternal life. And I'm wondering today, what path are you on? Which direction are you headed? I'm wondering today, are you bent on going your own way? Or have you seen the wisdom in following the paths of righteousness that Jesus has laid out for you? If you're willing to tell the truth and shame the devil, you know that every time you try to go your own way, you've messed it up. You know that. Every time you try to go your own way, you either hurt yourself or you hurt, or you hurt somebody. You know that. But the path of righteousness will never hurt you. The path of righteousness will never steer you in the wrong direction. The path of righteousness will never cause you pain and hurt at the soul level. Because Jesus got you. And he promises to support you and sustain you and uphold you. And he promises to deliver you from all trouble. And he promises to deliver you from the ultimate trouble, which is to spend eternity in hell. The path of righteousness is the path that Jesus has set out for you, that he wants you to travel. And it will lead to life and life eternal. Come on, I want to pray for you right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that, that man or that woman, that boy or that girl who is still bent on just going their own way. May this message, oh God, deal with them in a personal way. May this message be the catalyst for them to surrender and say, Lord, I want to travel the path of righteousness. Lord, I want to travel 
the right paths. I pray, God, that sometime today, if not right now, Lord, that they would just throw their hands up and bow their head and say, Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. And I want you to be the Lord and the leader of my life. I want you, oh God, to let me, um, lead me to the right paths. And Lord, I know that if they pray something like that, that you will hear them and that you will do exactly what you promised to do. You grab them by the hand and you'll lead them to the paths of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus, that today is still the day of salvation. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So wonderful for you to join us. Thank you for focusing in on this message. We are going to move into our communion ceremony right now. Um, we're going to uh, be reading uh, from uh, Second Peter, the, cha the third chapter in Second Peter. If you want to turn there, I believe we're going to start at the eighth verse. Uh, the third chapter uh, in Second Peter. Um, we're going to uh, read it right now. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. Amen. 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 When we partake of this communion service, we are not only remembering what Jesus has done for us, the just amazing work that he has done on the cross, paying for our sins, exchanging his righteousness for our unrighteousness. But we also look forward to the return of the Lord. We look forward to what the Bible says is the coming of God. We look forward to that. And we ought not think that just because God has delayed in his coming, that that means that he is delinquent in his promises. He is not that. You heard what the scripture said. He's just waiting, just waiting for uh, people to come into a saving knowledge of who he is. He just does not want anyone to perish. And so, Lord, so right now we're going to go to the Lord and we're going to ask his blessings upon the elements. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we do thank you, God, for this moment, this communion moment, oh God, in which we celebrate you, celebrate your cross, uh, celebrate salvation, celebrate your coming again as we look forward to the day of your return. Father, we pray that you will bless these elements. We pray, to God, that you will bless the bread, Lord, and bless the, bless the fruit, fruit of the vine. Father, uh, turn it from its natural to its spiritual, oh God, so that it will be a blessing to our souls. Thank you, Jesus. You do all things well. In Christ Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. The bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken on Calvary for the remission of sins. Come on, let's eat together. Cup represents the blood of our Lord, shed on Calvary, for the of sin. And those of you who are planning on joining us a little later, um, we look forward to seeing you out there. Make sure that you do exactly what my wife said. Wear your mask, 
follow the directions of those who are organizing the event so we can make sure that we follow the proper protocols. We want to be a blessing to the community and stay safe. And for those of you who are not going to join us, you know what I'm going to tell you. Stay safe, be well, stay home as much as possible. Thank you and God bless you. There are several ways in which you can give. You can give by texting SJCBC to 73256. You will receive a text message in return with the given link. If you are a member of the Realm community, you can give through your Realm Connect application on your tablet, your phone, or PC. Either text giving or application given allows you to choose a one-time gift or schedule reoccurring gifts. You may also give through your bank via bill pay or mail a check to St. John's Community Baptist Church, P.O. Box 2448, Newark, New Jersey, 07114. And let's remember, church, God loves a generous giver.
Goodness. 